you can all see this. Um, yeah, so it might be a little bit early as uh, Michaela was suggesting to already talk about documenting outputs and results. At least I'm not expecting you to be at that stage yet in your first uh, project report, but this presentation is to give you an idea of what will be coming later on and sort of to uh, mentally prepare you uh, in a way. Um, so um, there is some information about this also in the program manual. Uh, in your own time uh, what the idea is here but this is to, to give you the, the main points so um, why is it important to document outputs and results um, as Michaela was also suggesting we want to capture the impact of of your project on um, the stakeholders in the program area um, documenting outputs and results is also necessary to justify the use of the funding um, but if we do this well, it can also help to promote your projects, um, outputs and results wider um, on a regional level, on a national level, and on a European level. Uh, I can just say that we at the uh, Secretariat are often asked to provide good examples uh, either to other programs or to the European Commission or to um, the national level. So if we have good documentation, of your uh, outputs and results, then we can help to uh, multiply uh, what you're doing, but, but also for you yourself to uh, reach maybe new target groups, it can be very useful to have a good documentation. And maybe it can increase the uptake uh, and thereby increase the impact that your project is having. Um, what I didn't list here, but just that's more relevant for us at the administration is that we also need to report the indicators that you submit to us uh, to the European Commission. So for us, it's also helpful to have the, the documentation that, that made this <laughs> presentation more from your perspective. Um, so the idea is this. Um, I realize I skipped the slide here. Um, so in your application, you have defined what are going to be uh, the main things coming out of your project, the, the outputs, and also if, when they are being used, what, what results or, and what impacts uh, your project will have. And you have chosen, usually with our help, <laughs> and if you're a second call project, you might still be discussing this with your desk officer, which output and result indicators best match um, what you are going to do. Um, and you will use the project report to report on the progress on these uh, indicators. Um, so every time you achieve an output or you achieve a result, then you will indicate this in your progress report. You will change the, it will say how many units of the indicator that you have achieved. Um, we're only interested in, in whole units. So if you're halfway through delivering an output, please don't put half. Uh, half an indicator that doesn't really help us or you. Uh, we were basically only interested by the time you have fully achieved an indicator. So uh, this will not probably be in period one or period two, possibly. Um, that's fine. We don't expect that. Um, we have uh, tried to come up with um, what documentation it should be the minimum in order to. Um, count as one unit uh, for each indicator. And this is based on the indicator definitions. If you, you may remember that um, in, in our program, we're using common indicators. So they have been defined for all of the ERDF programs across Europe and specific inter interreg indicators for all of the interreg programs across Europe. Uh, so so they, the definitions aren't ours, but they're also not rocket science. They're not that difficult. So. Uh, we want to see documentation that evidences that you've achieved according to the definition of the indicators. And um, you can find this in the program manual, but we uh, will be, uh, well, I'll say something more about how we will try to make it easier for you to do so. And besides that, um, as Michaela was mentioning, we have um, this uh, typology of impact. So two program periods ago, based on real project data, uh, someone helped us to list what are the tangible impacts that our projects have typically and what are the intangible 
uh, impacts and, and um, we find that a very useful uh, list and we think it will help you also um, categorize the types of impacts you're having. Uh, and besides that, we're looking for the story as well. And so this is more probably towards the end of the project. Uh, so in summary, oh, this is the, the, the sort of the logic behind documenting outputs and results. So when you have achieved an output, you need to check that you're meeting all the elements in the definition, and then you need to document uh, that. And then uh, once your output is starting to be used, uh, then you will have achieved the result. And then you need to check that this result is meeting all the elements in the definition of the result indicator. And then you will document that. And finally, you will um, tell us your story, basically. So this is the, the general logic behind this. Um, so what we expect, and this is also based on experience from several programs and, and reporting of outputs and results, uh, that it's not always so easy to do this, uh, but we hope uh, and expect that it will come as a sort of package. And therefore we are working on uh, a fact sheet template that will be, uh, that will make it easier for you to report and makes it easier to share the information about your uh, outputs and results. And as Michaela was indicating, we're, we will look at um, finding a way to export information from GEMS that's already in there about your outputs and your results so that it will be easier for you to just complete a few other fields and then you'll have a nice, um, easy overview of, of what you have achieved. Um, besides that, um, outputs and results all often form groups together. Um, so if, you, uh, if your output is a, a jointly developed solution, um, then uh, the result is, is most likely the solution being taken up. So by the end of the project, we will try to group this information. So it's uh, telling the full story um, and then uh, including the impacts. Um, there, um, we would ask that the impact that you, um, uh, so basically you will choose from a list of typical impacts, uh, the ones that are most relevant for your project, but it should be impacts that you've already achieved and not potential impacts. Defined. And then all of this must also comply with publicity requirements and GDPR and open access results. So we should be able to use it as a program free of any liability. Um, and for this reason, we will try to make this template so it's much easier to meet all this in one uh, package and, and make it easier for you. Um, in the program manual, uh, but also here, I will try to give an example of a hypothetical uh, project, just so that it's maybe slightly easier to grasp what we're trying to do here. Um, so in this example, um, there's a project that is developing a decision-making tool for local authorities to make them better prepared for uh, disaster risk prevention in case of extreme weather. So it's a decision-making tool for local authorities. And they have chosen in their application, the indicator jointly developed solutions. And once this tool has been developed, they will have, the achievement will be one solution. Uh, so when they document this, um, because there's the definition of jointly developed solutions has a couple of elements, it should be jointly developed. So that should be clear. Uh, we would like to know, is this a completely new solution or is it an adaptation of an existing one? Uh, we would like to understand its main purpose and target groups. So it's quite clear it's there to improve disaster risk prevention and the target group is local authorities. And we would like to understand its functionality and delivery format. So it could be, it could be an online tool or it could be a toolkit consisting of documents or it could be an app or whatever it is that format we would like to see described and, and how it works. Um, we would like to understand how stakeholder needs were incorporated and uh, also actions needed for it to be taken up or upscaled. And that could be that uh, there needs to be a training course to help local authorities use the tool, or maybe you have a user manual, or it could be different things depending on what your output is. 
So that's the output. And let's say in this scenario, the output has been delivered. Um, the corresponding result is then that local authorities start to use this decision making tool. Um, so in terms of indicators, then the result indicator is solutions taken up or upskilled by organizations. And if one or multiple authorities are using this tool, then the achievement is one solution. Strangely enough, it's not counted as the number of authorities using it, but it's the number of solutions being used. So it's one solution. Uh, so in the progress report, the, the project will report one. And there, we, in terms of documenting this uh, result, we would like to know which authorities are using this solution. And um, if there's some kind of, um, let's say, action plan or strategy or other kind of document that this local authority has that indicates we are now intending to use this tool. Um, and we need to know a little bit about the timing that it took place during the project or within one year after the project. And that comes straight from the definition of the indicator. So that's what we would be looking for in the documentation of this result. And then finally, the authority using this tool will also have some impact. So it could be that the authority gets back to the project saying, this decision-making tool saved us time and money. And it also made us better in responding to extreme weather. And a third impact that your tool has had is that uh, we are better at risk prevention overall, not just in relation to extreme weather, but overall. So when it comes then to this typology of impact, which is this sort of checklist with all types of impact that projects can have, you could take based on the feedback from the end users, uh, time savings, cost savings and risk reduction as a, a tangible impact and possibly as an intangible impact that it increased institutional capacity and possibly that it influenced policy as well. This depends on what information you get back, of course, from your um, end users. Um, so, then we would like to see, so first of all, we would like to, you to tick in the typology of impacts, which impacts have been achieved, and also some kind of either testimonial from the end users or some kind of story in which you describe what the impact has been. So hopefully this makes it easier to follow what it is that we're looking at. And if we have all this information uh, in a, in a sort of package or in a flat sheet that will make it easier for you to share it with others and easier for us um, to share it with others as well. Um, so we will try. So for each, this now is an example with the indicator jointly developed solutions and solutions taken up as indicators. But we have to find for each uh, output indicator and for each result indicator what kind of information we're looking for. Um, so hopefully that um, will make it easier um, to report on.